pretty cool that they not necessarily pretty cool that uh, it's going to start the game on Sunday. But however, we believe it also helped us to have a little bit more time with our new players in trying to make sure that they understand the way we play. And we believe the team is uh, ready to, to give the role. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, I'll take questions from the floor now. Um, I'll start with uh, Karawo. I'll go to Karawo. You'll have the first question. Thank you. Thank you, Fatu. Uh, congratulations once again to both of you coaches. Uh, it's, a, it's a massive job, it really is. Uh, Coach Magnob, I'd like to, to start with you. Uh, when Immediately when, when Peter Msimani had announced that he will be leaving the club, I quickly had a look, uh, or at glance, if you like, at, at the Twitter page of Sundowns, as well as all you know platforms of social media. A lot of Sundown supporters really wanted you to be the head coach. Coach, uh, It looks like you are loved at the club. You know, the supporters love you, they adore you. Uh, you're very quiet. You're very humble. You know, you've got your heart in your sleeve for the club. How does that make you feel knowing that you're so, so much loved, you know, by the supporters of the club, you know, the way that you carry yourself in and around uh, the football club, coach? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's very humbling because uh, it's the opinions of the people and how they look at things. And one can't help but appreciate when people are showing love and support. Uh, but at the same time, I'm one person that uh, never really thinks positions and everything is, is everything in this planet. Maybe my studies have also made me aware that position is, is always the first step in leadership. There's so much more that you can do uh, in leadership. And uh, I appreciate the group that I work with. I'm very happy with uh, the coach that I also work with. I, I just believe we, we've got the chemistry that is necessary for a team to succeed. Even the inclusion of Steve with our individual differences, I think we, may, we are even stronger. Uh, which makes the team to be in very safe hands. But I must say, I really appreciate the support and the love that I get from General Nation. And uh, I hope to try and do the best I can, and together with the guys that I'm working with, to make sure that the team gets the success that it deserves. Okay, let's go to Ntako. Ntako, you're up next. Okay, let's move on to Mazola. To both uh, Coach Bulani and Coach Manoba, uh, obviously you, the two of you have been part of that um, Sundowns technical team for some time. Yes, Coach Bulani did go away for uh, some two, three years now he's back. I'd, I'd, I just want to find out, does anything change in terms of the approach, uh, given that obviously uh, one of the three of you and Coach Pito has, has, left, has left the building. Um, I imagine any coach that comes into a, a job as big as this wants to have their own sort of footprint and, and ideologies and that. And obviously you've, you've shared that together for the last little while, uh, but with Coach Pito gone, you know, what, what changes or, you know, you don't fix what's, what's broken if that is indeed the case. Coach Rolani, you can go ahead. Can you, can you repeat the question, please? Okay, Mazola, there's a request for you to repeat. Okay, okay. Can you hear me now, coaches? Yeah, much, much better. better. Much better. I was asking, I was saying, um, Coach Rulani, Coach Mangoba, you've obviously been there for, for some time. Coach Rulani was away uh, at Pirates and Chipa, respectively. With Coach Peter gone, does anything change? Because the three of you have had sort of the, obviously the same ideology for some time. But with Coach Peter gone, does anything change? Because I would imagine any coach that comes into a job as massive as this one, wants to have their own footprint and their own ideology and how they do things. What changes, if, if, if anything at all? <laughs> uh, 
to be honest, we, we would not like to tamper much with uh, what has been happening all along because we've been part of it. But obviously, all coaches have got their own individual differences. There's always going to be those small elements that can change in the game and the approach and probably the personality of the team. And also looking at the number of players that we have, it's, it's most likely that they will also bring a new element into the game, which is why they, they were brought here. So one cannot say it's going to be exactly the same, but we will try as much as we can to make sure that the, the team plays more or less the same as Coach Pizzo. Uh, Coach Pizzo's era, but obviously, like I said, there will be changes here and there, but they will have to be slowly, slowly introduced because when you rush, we, we've, we've missed this cup a lot because every time when we start the season, we find that maybe with new players, we want to try and give them a run and we end up not, not going far. At times, we, we don't even get to the final. So we'll obviously look into, into making sure that there is a little bit of continuity, even if there are some slight changes, but they don't happen uh, dramatically. All right, let's move on to Velile. Um, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Coach Manova and uh, Coach Rulani. Um, just on uh, this weekend, it's also a big weekend uh, for Coach Pito, um, playing in the Cup Champions League uh, semifinals uh, against me, that uh, team that uh, both of you know very well. Um, what would be your message to him and, and also him going there um, also as we've seen recently with Coach Kevin um, what does it mean to South African football coaches um, could this be the breakthrough that we've needed in terms of making our mark on the international stage as far as coaches is concerned We could not hear you very well Maybe Coach Manny had Please, please right, uh, your... Yeah, we'll, we'll come back We'll come back to, to, to Velile. Let's maybe... Yeah. We'll, come, we'll come back to, 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 to Velile. Let's give uh, the, the colleagues that are there an opportunity. I see we've got Tepo, uh, who is there physically there at Krokop. Tepo, you can go ahead. Thanks. Congratulations for the coaches. Uh, I just, just to go back on, on, on some of the questions, because I got the answer that initially. Now, after Coach Bizong Simani left to both coaches in Oakland, does it now help? Because, as you, I think you mentioned earlier, that you've been part of the journey uh, in terms of the previous successes of Salas. Does it help, especially for the players, uh, for adjusting? It's not like they are based there. They are facing completely new coaches. Let's be consistent for the team. Does it help the players also mentally? It's not a shock for them. Of course, Look, I think, um, of course, uh, the era of Coach Pizzo was a successful era, uh, an important era for the history of the club. But the reality is uh, it would be a little bit too naive of us to, to forget of uh, the things that worked in the past and try to immediately induce a lot of changes. Uh, I always say to people that success has the same clues. And ours is to make sure that uh, the clues that were, were evident in, in the previous regime had led to the success of the club, and consistently so. Uh, are the things that we've got to maintain and not, not try to, to temper too much with because, of course, as you say, we, we're dealing with human beings uh, uh, and the players uh, immediately find comfort. And once they find comfort in a certain regime and in a certain way of doing things, it's easier for them to perform and, and give consistently results. So I think, I think that's important for the club. That's important for the sustainability of the success and, uh, and like Coach Matoba already said and alluded to, uh, the only changes would come from the personalities uh, because different coaches are different human beings and have different personalities. And therefore, uh, 
and the personality of the team needs to be reflected in, in that. But um, I think I think it is very important that we don't we don't take the players too much of their out of their comfort zone because already we've got a huge task on our hands to try and induct the new players into Mamelodi Sundowns and it's not easy. The pressure, the responsibility is, is, is massive uh, and you've got to try to easily allow them to, to adapt but while they are adapting make sure that uh, the club is moving in the right direction and the, the only way to move is to get results. Um. All right, let's also give Minente a chance there in Newsroom Africa. You can go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Chairman. Uh, I think if I can get some comments from both the coaches. Coach Brito said he was the face, but, you know, the coaching staff was teamwork. Things that clubs were in the same direction. But how much the current coaches look at the papers and what's happening in the media and you laugh amongst yourself on the group because there's obviously concerns of the personalities going to play, the players are going to have to get dictionaries now. How much of the WhatsApp coaches, WhatsApp group do you laugh about it because all of you have great credentials and you're good at your job. Um, do you sometimes look back and smile along amongst yourselves and just laugh at some of the things that come up? The right club to to afford dictionaries <laughs> because okay. all we do is we just sign requisitions and we get sixty dictionaries. So we are okay. The players are in the right space. Don't worry. But yeah, no, uh, we we talk about it. It's all right. It's uh, it's part of the game. You know, uh, it's a game of opinions, and and that's it. Uh, uh, you take it on the chin and you move on. Unfortunately, when you are in our space as leaders, we are exposed to millions and millions of opinions. And the reality is uh, if you don't have thick skin uh, and you, if you listen to too many voices, you'll be uh, distracted. Uh, when you watch the modern game, uh, even Pep Guardiola gets criticized. You're in club plus 7-2 to to Aston Villa two weeks ago and, and was hammered. And that is the referee's uh, European champion, uh, English Premier League champion. So, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, when you're in this industry, unfortunately, it comes with uh, uh, the tag. And the tag is you need thick skin to survive because, uh, like everybody, everybody thinks they can uh, tell Michael Schumacher how to, to race the car. But the reality is only Michael Schumacher can raise the cup. And he has to make a very, very good effort to make sure that he wins because there's pressure to win. Uh, so that's the reality and we find ourselves in that space and we've just got to uh, be steadfast in our focus and uh, uh, have the right chemistry, the right respect, the right humility uh, in understanding that it's not about us. Uh, there's, uh, there's millions and millions and millions of people that have high expectations for us to be able to represent them. And like Coach Pizzo said, uh, the face is not as important as the rest of the body. In isolation, the face cannot function. It needs every single part of the organization, every other organ within the body to succeed. And, 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 and that is the space that we have to get ourselves into. And uh, without the humility, without the respect, uh, without the selflessness, uh, no no team can function, and it is our responsibility to carry out those personal uh, personality traits. So we've got a sense of humor also about us. So I think it's okay that uh, we are known as uh, Shadrach, Mishak, and Abednego, but we we, we keep going. <laughs> Do you still want me to come Okay. 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 Everything comes with the territory. And uh, one thing that I always believe in, which is nothing is newsworthy every day. So you get one job today, we laugh at it. You must get another one the following day. You must not get finished. 
So we, we know the space that we are in. Uh, we've had the issue of dictionaries. We've had the, the issues of the leaders in the Bible. We, we laugh at these things because we're asking ourselves which one is authentic, but it's okay. So the truth of the matter is, we, it's the only unfortunate part in our society, which is something that I think we, we all need to learn from. We, we are too entrenched into thinking about positions. Uh, and I always say to people, a position is the lowest part or the lowest point of leadership. Because there are five steps in leadership. The, the most important elements in leadership are beyond the position. If you are a father in your house, you can't be busy telling your kids that I am your father. Because it's not about being known that you are a father or not. It's about, it's about the responsibilities of being a father. Are you taking care of your family? Why do you have to make them aware that you are the father? Maybe it's because you doubt that there is something that they are not sure of. You know? And our society is, is too entrenched in always worrying about the position. That's why even in politics, people are fighting and killing each other to become councillors and ministers and all that because they think the position is everything. And yet the position is the lowest point of leadership. In any leadership context, you have a responsibility that is bigger than just the position. The position is the first step. Then the second step is the permission. Do the people that you are supposed to lead give you permission to lead them? Are you the person that they say, we are happy to be led by these people? And if the players, in this case, uh, the technical team and the support staff, the supporters believe we can lead them, and they give us that permission, and they, they humbly say, we, we've got these people around us, and they must lead us. It's, it's a very important step. It's just the second step in leadership, okay? Then when you've been given that permission, you've got a responsibility to, to now improve human beings and help human beings to become better than what they were. In this case, it's the players. In politics, it may be the people on the ground. But it's, it's very important in our society to drift a little bit away from the worry of positions, but look more deeper into the abilities of people to carry their responsibilities. Because it's very hard for, for many South Africans to reach the pinnacle. And the pinnacle is the ability of a leader having, having been given permission, having been able to develop people, to be also able to develop his leaders around him. And once you can develop leaders around you, then you can say, I've done my part. And in our society, I find it uh, so important for people to know who is the father, who is the mother, who is the coach, who is the assistant coach, who is this. Those, those things are not very important because when the three of us are sitting down, it's very easy for the three of us to know who is contributing what, who is contributing what in order to make sure that this thing moves. And leadership is the most important component in making sure that this happens. And leadership is it's a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of courage. It's a matter of humaneness, trustworthiness, and sternness. And somebody must take that role. And maybe Coach Lani will take that role in certain segments of the team. I will take those, that those roles in certain segments of the team. Steve and the rest of the technical staff and support staff have got that, that responsibility. But all these ridicules that are coming in around, that will keep coming because in Zulu we say, uh, there is no one who, who is in charge. People will not gossip around. And you, you must be able to take it because it comes with the territory. But if our society can just move a little bit deeper in, in our critical thoughts and look at what are the contributions of each and every individual. Because believe me, the technical team that we have assembled is a very good technical team. It's a very good technical team. And as to what happens after, but the foundation of the people that we have around is good. 
the players that we have assembled are good. Maybe the integration process, because there are quite many, will take a little bit longer if we make a mistake of wanting to bring everyone into the mix immediately. But rest assured, we've got a team that is capable. All right, thank you, coaches. Uh, I'm gonna move on to back to the participants on Zoom. Uh, I've noted you, Prasfiso Ramara, who is there as well. Uh, let me go back to Velile, if you can be brief and straight to the point. Uh, can you hear me now, coaches? Much better. Much better. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, this is also an important week for uh, Coach Pizzo. He plays. Um, Kev Champions League semi-finals um, against Widat. Um, what can you say to him ahead of um, this big task? And also, um, especially him with the technical team there, having been joined by coach Kevin Johnson, something that uh, doesn't happen a lot in Africa to see other coaches moving around, especially at big clubs. Is this the breakthrough that we need um, in terms of exposing our coaches um, and, and also making our mark? Yeah, with that, one thing I can guarantee you, it's more than a game. In that space of the North Africans, it's a fight. And uh, it's bigger than what you can even think emotionally. And uh, at times the game can be a little bit scrappy because emotionally, those players in that space never really produce a very nice clinical game because there is always uh, fights within the game, the tackles, the bookings, and many things. But uh, we know uh, that Coach Peter is thick skinned. Uh, we've been in, that spa in those spaces a lot, and we're very confident that he will represent us with dignity and honor. And uh, he is opening a door for all of us. We, can, we can't help but appreciate the opportunity that he got and also appreciate the fact that he brought our countrymen uh, in Kevin Johnson, in uh, Musima Klaba, and uh, Kabelo Ramaka. We believe they will represent South Africa with pride and also maybe open doors for most of our coaches in the Southern Hemisphere to be able to get these opportunities. And we, we really wish him the best of luck and we are very confident that he's got what it takes to pull him through. Um, a very wise man once said to me that uh, the moment finds the man and I think um, he's well prepared if there's anybody that is uh, up to the task uh, it would be Coach Pizzo, the experience that he's, he's had uh, and he's accumulated over the years uh, his experience in semi-finals of the Champions League, his experience uh, of playing against Widat, uh, his experience of playing against North uh, African teams uh, gives him the right um, tools to be able to to maneuver as he as he creates and he, he continues on the trailblazing mission. Um, and ours is just to support him and the rest of the technical team uh, in their journey. And and he knows even from a personal capacity that he has all our support. Uh, he knows even in private conversations that uh, he has all our support and it is one thing to express support uh, in the public but it's another thing to express sincerely your support in, in private and, and he knows that uh, um, we wish him all the best of luck and uh, but we've also got uh, a lot of confidence um, in him and the rest of his technical team in Musi in uh, Coach Kevin and in KB, uh, because um, they are our people, they are our brothers, and uh, um, we know that they can uh, they can achieve uh, what everybody else expects them to achieve. So, all the best of luck, and um, yeah, yeah, they'll be lifting the trophy very soon. So, we wish them all the best. Joe, moving on to Mbali Sikiti. Please, just one question uh, so we can give others a chance. Mbali, go ahead. 
Thank you so much. Uh, coaches, when you look at all the signings that you've made this far, I think it's, a, it's almost a dozen uh, signings, quite a number of players joined and you also promoted uh, uh, players as well from the MTC. Uh, looking at the season ahead and uh, the MTN8, uh, one might say that uh, you are spoiled for choice in terms of the quality of players that you already have and the ones that you have acquired. Is this a beautiful headache to have in terms of selecting a squad for the day? Because I can imagine um, you've got all this quality to choose from. Is this, Would you call this a beautiful headache to have? In my opinion, it will be very unfair to, to expect that all these signings that have just joined this up uh, are now ready to compete uh, here. The adaptation process normally takes longer. Uh, if I were to make an example of some of the players that joined us as big players, uh, like Kama Billiard, it took him over two years to really hit the, the road running uh, here. And uh, for me, I honestly think we, we all, as a family of Sundowns, from the supporters, the coaches, the support staff, and everyone from administration, the president of the club and the board, it is very important to give time for adaptation to these players because if we rush them, we might have a lot of them playing with very high anxiety. And with high anxiety, accuracy is always compromised and uh, mistakes are prone to happen. So as the coaches, we know very well, we cannot afford to immediately overhaul the team that has, has won three trophies last season. The team that has shown us confidence at any level of competition, we're still very confident of the players that we've had. And uh, for anyone who wants to take the jersey from that team, he really has to work very hard to show that immediately he's capable of taking over. But it's not going to be an easy road for anyone. Uh, that's my personal opinion. But we wish they can adapt quicker because it will benefit us in the games to come when we've got a little bit more uh, in terms of fresh players and fresh ideas and fresh outlook in the team. But uh, I can guarantee you, with the coaches that we work with, we know very well it's not something we need to rush. It's not yet broken. There's no need to fix it. Okay. Humuto uh, Situsha. Humuto, you can go ahead. Oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, to Coach Mangoba, um, you've, you've been part of the successful era of Pizzo Musimani, winning many trophies, uh, except the MTN8. Uh, would you say this is the motivation for you uh, going to this uh, MTN8 to finally land and win this trophy for Sundowns? And uh, also you're coming up against a team which you just beat in the Net Bank Cup. Um, what do you say would you expect from... Uh, the uh, Blue Fontaine Celtic. And to coach Rulani, um, you've been part of a similar setup where you are a co coach at Orlando Pires. Uh, it's a similar setup again now. What would you say would work uh, for such an arrangement, for a lack of better word? What, 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 what makes this kind of an arrangement work uh, where you have a, you know, a coach, Esma Nova, in this case? What would, it, what, what would, it, would make it work? And to start, to start maybe, <clears throat> I would say it's not my wish to win the MTN8. That's the good thing. Everybody at Sundowns, we've been here, I think I've been here for six years now. This is one cup that has always found its way out and we've never won it once. I think we've been in the final once against Fess and Uh We have a big responsibility as a technical team, but uh, the coaches that we work, I work with, I am very confident. The team that uh, we, we, we have, one is also confident that uh, they can put it through. But more than anything else, it is one cup that I always say, you should win. When you're a team like, like Sundowns, and you've just come from winning the league and the Netbank Bank Cup, uh, probably just one month away, you should 
still have the confidence and the willpower to say, let's fight for it. And uh, we believe in everything that we, we have done. We believe in the group that we have from the players, support staff and everyone. And the support that we've, we, we've gathered from the president and the board of the club, that uh, there is nothing that should stop us from winning uh, this trophy. But we know very well it's not going to be easy. And we'll give it our best shot, just like we've always done. Uh, but I believe this time around, we can put ourselves in the semi-finals if we work very hard. We are playing against a very awkward team, Celtics. And at this stage, we all presume that they will come with one or two or three of the shapes that they were playing with last year, which were very awkward. But uh, with that presumption, we've also come up with strategies that we believe can help us to be able to overcome. And we, we are confident that we've got the capacity and the personality of our team suggests that when you go into matches like this, we should do the best we can to win. Thank you. Coach Rulani? Yes, sir. Uh, there was a question for you, I think, in the... What was the question again? Sorry. Yes, if I can repeat, if I do, um, uh, the question was, you've been part of a similar setup where you are a co-coach before with Pirates. Coming to a similar setup now, um, what would it say it takes for such a, an arrangement to work where you've got two coaches, you know, as you guys are working? What, what does it take for that kind of an arrangement to actually work and deliver results for a club? It takes, it takes good coaching. You've got to be good coaches and you've got to, you've got to work very, very hard to, to get the results that uh, the club needs. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll take uh, the last two questions. I will go to Vuyo first. Vuyo. Uh, th thanks, Fatu. Um, good afternoon, coaches. Um, just a quick one from me is that of Musi and uh, KB. Um, just uh, coach, uh, maybe Mangoba. Um, how much have a loss with these two guys to sort of the technical team? And if those fitness and uh, um, analysis positions have been filled yet? Yeah, it was a big loss. Uh, considering this, these are, these are the guys we've been working with for the past six, seven years. And uh, we, we were a well old machine with them. But we have to move on. We have to move on. We have moved on. We are trying our level best to to help ourselves. At this stage, we have not replaced uh, Mosi, but fortunately, we still have Kulam and Mario Masha in, in, in those positions. What we have done is to try and reinforce our analysis department by bringing Zbu Makita as our data analyst, which we never had before, because we believe uh, the data that we can get can also help us to make better decisions uh, with the group that we have and also better decisions against the opponents that will be playing when we've got their numbers better. And we know exactly what they are capable of and who should we guard against and all that. The video footage also helps, but uh, at times data can uh, be more objective and make us to decide and think better about the possibilities that we have in front of us. We will be looking at trying to make sure that we also add that uh, video analyst in the place of Mosi, we are working very hard uh, with Coach Mani to make sure that we get the right people to help us and get this thing uh, rolling immediately. All right, uh, Prasfiso Romara, if you, you will have the last question. Hey, thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, somebody was trying to help me earlier counting the number of signings you made. And you already decided to getting all the players that you're going to release. Has that been agreed upon? To, to be honest, we are, we are looking into it very closely. But it will be premature of us to, to suggest the names at this stage because we you know, we've only had two weeks of preparation. And we, we just want to satisfy ourselves and uh, make sure that we, we don't lose players that could have helped, you know, helped to us. And at the same time, we don't keep players here for too long and they end up not getting opportunities anywhere else. 
So we, we are very conscious of uh, the space. And we are very conscious of the challenges and the demands that we are expected of us, but we, we are old enough to understand that we have a responsibility to the society. We cannot take other people's jobs away and be selfish and keep them here when they are not going to play. And at times it happens to players that you are very, you are very fond of because you believe they are good human beings and they've served you at times. And it's always gonna be a cash 22, but the biggest balance we must strike is to make sure that we help people to find places to play immediately so that nobody feels disgruntled that we, we, we are keeping him here, but we, we don't have any intention of playing. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one because with so many signings, it, it makes it very hard. And it also does not guarantee the signings that they will stay, all stay, because we have to look very closely into this and make sure that we satisfy ourselves. If we have to keep the player that was here at the expense of a player that was signed, so be it. But we have to do what is in the best interest of the club, because at this stage, what is more important is to get this machine rolling without uh, trying to, to force people to adapt quickly when we know very well that we might have hiccups along the road. All right, uh, thank you very much coaches and uh, thank you very much colleagues for joining us. I think this will conclude the press conference and uh, all the best for Sunday. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Thank you.